The AI sky replacement tool in Luminar 4 is an absolute game changer. For me, I shoot a lot of architecture and landscape, and sometimes those situations, you don't get the perfect sky, but you've got this vision in your mind of what you want your image to be like, and this tool really opens up the doors to enable you to be able to do that. It's really easy to use. The AI does most of the heavy lifting for you, so it's a real, real time saver. So if you want to swap skies easily and you don't have Luminar 4 yet and you would like to get a copy, there's a link below and you can use a discount code, which is at sky10 to get hold of a copy. It is well worth it just for this tool alone. I swear down, it has saved me so much time. So without further ado, let's get into how to swap skies with Luminar 4. Let's do it. Okay, so we're gonna replace the sky in this particular image. Usually this would take a lot of effort masking out if you're using another piece of software, but we're gonna see what Luminar can actually do for us. So the first thing we need to do is come over to the Edit tab. From here, we're gonna choose the Creative section. Now in here, we have the AI Sky Replacement. So just open that up, and the first thing we're gonna to want to do is actually select a sky. Now I've been through these skies, had a little look, and the one that I really like is Dramatic Sunset 2 for this particular image. So let's click that. And Luminar drops that in using the default settings. From here, let's take a look at the different controls we've got and see how we can improve the effect. Firstly, I'm gonna to come to this checkbox here that says Flip Sky, and I'm gonna tick that because currently the sun is sitting behind these trees here. I'd love to flip it and put it into this open area of sky here. So let's do that. I think that looks much nicer. First of all, let's talk from top to bottom and go through what these sliders do. So as you saw, I actually selected Dramatic Sunset 2, but what you can also do is choose any sky that comes with Luminar, or you can load your own custom sky image. So for example, if I wanted to bring in one of my skies, I double click that and Luminar will drop that straight in. That isn't a great choice for this particular image, so let's go back to our dramatic sunset too. So the first slider here, horizontal blending, just deals with the transition between the horizon line and the sky. And the native setting for that is 20, but I find pushing that further to the right just blends out that area between the horizon line and the sky and creates a much more photorealistic blend. When you first bring your sky into Luminar, the AI will actually figure out where the horizon line is, and it generally does a pretty good job of this. If you want to override it, however, you can do that with the horizontal position slider. So we can take that up and we can take that down to bring the sky further down. In this case, I might just take it a little higher just so that it sits above the tree line. One of my favorite sliders is the Relight Scene slider. And what that is basically gonna do is try and match the foreground elements, the color there, to what you've introduced in the sky. So if we bring that to the right, we'll start to see a much more natural, orangey look to the grass. Whereas if I take it all the way to the left, that's the original image, take it to the right, it darkens things down and it matches the kind of orange toning we've got in the sky. So I really like that and I really like pushing that relight scene quite far up. Guys, I hope this video is useful and informative to you. If it is, please leave me a like. If like me, you love photo editing and you're passionate about it, I really am. Join me on the journey and subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you along for the ride. Cheers, guys. The Sky Global slider controls just how much of the new sky you've introduced will blend with the existing sky. Now let's take a look at these advanced settings. If you don't see them, simply click the advanced settings button here. The close gap slider fixes really small details where there might be holes that aren't filled. The sky replacement tool does a really good job usually, but sometimes it needs a little helping hand and this slider can really help. So if we push the close gap slider up from its native 10 position, let's push it all the way up to 50. You can see that that actually introduced more of the sky and did a better job of masking these trees out. If we zoom in here, we can actually see that the mask is pretty much perfect. Let's zoom back out. If you want to show some of your existing clouds with the new sky that you're introducing, you can use the sky local slider to do that. If you feel that the sky that you've introduced is too sharp, 
um, compared to the foreground of the image, what you can actually do is defocus the sky. So let's have a look at how that works. If I take the slider all the way to the right, you can see exactly what that's doing. In this case, we don't need to defocus it that much. And often I'll leave that exactly where it is. But if you do need to defocus the sky, that ability is there for you. The sky temperature allows you to either warm things up by taking things to the right, which in this case, if we're wanting to enhance this look of a beautiful sunset, we could do that, or we can take it to the left to cool it down. Now, one thing you'll notice that I think is really, really cool is as we move this sky temperature to the right and to the left, the relighting of the scene is also adapting. So our foreground gets cooler to match the cool look. If we take it to the right, the foreground warms up to match the warmth of the sky, which is awesome. If the sky appears too dark or too bright, you can use the sky exposure slider by taking it to the right or to the left to brighten or darken things. In this case, I'm just going to leave things exactly where they are because I feel like it's a nice moody shot as it is. So if we turn this look off and then on using the toggle at the top of the tool palette here, we can really see a marked difference in this photo. Having this ability to swap out skies is really powerful. And the fact that you can do it with such speed in Luminar 4, I think is amazing. As I said, Luminar does come bundled with a selection of skies that you can use yourself straight from this drop down list here. And that's great for giving you some new options for your photographs. But if you want to take things one step further, I would seriously consider start collecting your own sky library. When you see some really cool skies out there, go out there, capture them, and you can start importing your own work into Luminar. Hopefully from this you've seen just how powerful the AI sky replacement tool is. It is seriously insane, such a time saver. So get yourself a copy of Luminar 4 if you don't already and do some good stuff with it, people. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the worst ending ever. I'll see you in the next video, which is number 11 in our series of Luminar 4 editing, and it's how to bring out the most from dull photos. I'll just bring them, give them some life. So join me there for that one, guys. Thanks so much.